Good morning. Okay, so we are going to be going through the book of Job again. And for those of you um, that are new to joining us, welcome. And um, we'll go ahead and open in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for this morning. I thank you for your word. Lord, I just ask that you would meet us here. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to be who you've called us to be. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Help us to show that same mercy and love to others. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Got a different tablet because mine had a cracked screen. So I'm trying to get used to that feature. And my screen keeps timing out. So I've got to uh, fix that. Okay. All right. So here we go. We're going to be in Job 34. All right. So Elihu asserts God's justice. So Elihu is one of Job's friends. Job was a righteous man, an upright man, did everything he was supposed to in the eyes of the Lord. But God allowed testing and trials to come into his life and he lost all his wealth and he lost all his health and he lost all his children and was left only with a nagging wife who told him to curse God and die and three friends who didn't believe he was really righteous and were telling him that he needed to just confess his sin so he could be right with God but he had not done anything wrong so it was it was not helpful as a friend to tell your friend that's going through a hard time you know just just get right with God, right? And that's still not the right setting, so let's see. Okay. Screen time. Okay, let's just do that one. All right, so here we go. Elihu asserts God's justice, chapter 34 of Job. Then Elihu answered and said, I guess it's, oh, you're back. It said it was trying to reconnect. Let me try and uh, move this sometimes if you move just slightly it's enough okay hopefully that's enough then Elihu answered and said hear my words you wise men and give ear to me I'll, I'll click it okay. and give ear to me you who know for the ear tests words as the palate tests food let us choose what is right let us know among ourselves what is good for Job has said I am in the right and God has taken away my right in spite of my right, I am counted a liar. My wound is incurable, though I am without transgression. What man is like Job, who drinks up scoffing like water, who travels in company with evildoers and walks with wicked men? This is his friend. This is, this is his friend, yes. For he has said it profits a man nothing that he should take delight in God. Therefore hear me, you men of understanding, far be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should do wrong. For according to the work of a man, he will repay him, and according to his ways, he will make it befall him. Of a truth, God will not do wickedly. And the Almighty will not pervert justice. Who gave him charge over the earth and who laid on him the whole world? Hold on. I have Scotia over here. And he's just kind of shaking and, and not having a day this morning. So I guess he wants to be held. So here we go. Therefore, hear me, you men of understanding, far be it from God that he should do wickedness. And from the Almighty that he should do wrong. For according to the work of a man, he will repay him. Of a truth, God will not do wickedly, and the Almighty will not pervert justice. Who gave him charge over the earth, and who laid on him the whole world? If he should set his heart to it, and gather to himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh would perish together, and a man would return to dust. If you have understanding, hear this. Listen to what I say. Shall one who hates justice govern? Will you condemn him who is righteous and mighty? Who says to a king, worthless one, and to nobles, wicked man? Who shows no partiality to princes, nor regards the rich more than the poor? For they are all the work of his hands. In a moment they die, at midnight the people are shaken and pass away. And the mighty are taken away by no human hand. For his eyes are on the ways of a man, and he sees all his steps. There is no gloom or deep darkness where evildoers may hide themselves. 
For God has no deed to consider a man further that he should go before God in judgment. He shatters the mighty without investigation and sets others in their place. Thus, knowing their works, he overturns them in the night and they are crushed. He strikes them. Oh, his ear hit it. Uh, hmm, he strikes them. They're crushed. He strikes them for their witness in a place for all to see. Good morning, Jackie. Thanks for being here. Because they turned aside from following him and had no regard for any of his ways, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come to him. And he heard the cry of the afflicted. When he is quiet, who can condemn? When he hides his face, who can behold him? Whether it be a nation or a man, that a godless man should not reign, that he should not ensnare the people. For has anyone said to God, I have borne punishment, I will not offend any more? Teach me what I do not see. If I have done iniquity, I will do it no more. Will he then make repayment to suit you because you reject it? For you must choose and not I, therefore, declare what you know. Men of understanding will say to me, and the wise man who hears me will say, Job speaks without knowledge. His words are without insight. Would that Job were tried to the end because he answers like wicked men. For he adds rebellion to his sin. He claps his hands among us and multiplies his words against God. Now, Job was upright and even in his suffering, he did not go against God. He questioned as to why he was there. He, he wished he had never been born. He always acknowledged that God was God and he was not. And now he's taking the affliction in words by his friend of how wicked and awful he is because he's trying to say, I did nothing wrong. I did nothing to deserve this. Massive thunder and lightning storm and my dogs are being scaredy cats. Finally got them from being on me so I could get on Facebook. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the bad storm. I hope you, your area is a little better. Um, I'm glad that you're here though, Jackie. Okay, so let's get back to Elihu. Elihu is gonna condemn Job now, more so than he's been doing in this last chapter. So now we're in chapter 35. Elihu, and Elihu answered and said, do you think this to be just? Do you say it is my right before God? that you ask, what advantage have I? How am I better off than I had if I had sinned? I will answer you and your friends with you. Look at the heavens and see, and behold the clouds which are higher than you. If you have sinned, what do you accomplish against him? And if your transgressions are multiplied, what do you do to him? If you are righteous, what do you give to him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness concerns a man like yourself and your righteousness, a son of man. Because of the multitude of oppressions, people cry out. They call for help because of the arm of the mighty. But none says, where is my God? Where is God my maker? Who gives songs in the night, who teaches us more than the beasts of the earth and makes us wiser than the birds of the heavens. There they cry out, but he does not answer. Because of the pride of evil men, surely God does not hear an empty cry, nor does the Almighty regard it. How much less when you say that you do not see him, that the case is before him and you are waiting for him. And now because his anger does not punish and he does not much take note of transgression, Job opens his mouth in empty talk. He multiplies words without knowledge. Don't be this friend, okay? <laughs> You know, sometimes it's better to just listen to your friend than to try and put them in their place. And that's what this friend is doing. You know, regardless of what the situation looks like, be the friend that just sits and listens. Be the friend that just points them back to God. Don't be the friend that's condemning them like this. This is really just, don't be this friend. Now, this next chapter is him extolling God's greatness, which is obviously a good thing. And we can always point it back to God, but we shouldn't point it back to God at the expense of putting down another person, right? So Aunt Elihu continues and said, bear with me a little while and I will show you, for I have yet something to say on God's behalf. 
For I, ha uh, I will get my knowledge from afar and ascribe righteous to righteousness to my maker. For truly my words are not false. One who is perfect is knowledge one who is perfect in knowledge is with you. Behold, God is mighty and does not despise any. Oh. My screen is touchy. I got to learn how to touch it. Sorry. Okay. Behold, God is mighty and does not despise any. He is mighty in strength of understanding. He does not keep the wicked alive, but gives the affliction their right. He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous, but with kings on the throne, he sets them forever and they are exalted. And if they are bound in chains and caught in cords of affliction, then he declares, oh my goodness, this is just keeps bouncing everywhere. Then he declares to them their work and their transgressions that they are behaving arrogantly. Don't behave arrogantly before God. He opens their ears to the instruction to instruction and commands that they return from iniquity. If they listen and serve him, they complete their days in prosperity and their years in pl pleasantness. But if they do not listen, they perish by the sword and die without knowledge. The godless in heart cherish anger. They do not cry for help when he binds them. They die in youth and their life ends among the cult prostitutes. He delivers the afflicted by their affliction and opens their ear by adversity. He also allured you out of distress into a broad place where there was no cramping and what was set on your table was full of fatness. But you are full of the judgment on the wicked. Judgment and justice seize you. Beware lest wrath entice you into scoffing and let not the greatness of the ransom turn you aside. Will your cry for help avail to keep you from distress? Or all the force of your strength do not long for the night when peoples vanish in their place. Take care, do not turn to iniquity, for this you have chosen rather than affliction. Behold, God is exalted in his power. Who is a teacher like him? Who has prescribed for him his way? Or who can say you have done wrong? Remember to extol his work of which men have sung. All mankind has looked on it. Man beholds it from afar. Behold, God is great and we know him not. The number of his years is unsearchable. For he draws up the drops of water. They distill his mist and rain, which the skies pour down and drop on mankind abundantly. Can anyone understand the spreading of the clouds, the thundering of his pavilion? How amazing is that? You just talked about thunder and lightning storms and and right here in job he's talking about the same thing um jackie's listening behold he scatters his lightning about him and covers the roots of the sea for by these he judges peoples he gives food in abundance he covers his hands with the lightning and commands it to strike the mark it crash it's crashing declares his presence the cattle also declare that he rises so God is just declaring his presence there for you, Miss Jackie, who's dealing with massive thunder and lightning storms. So there, there is Job. Job is there in, in, chapter, in the chapters we just read, and his friend is just telling him that, you know, don't curse God, don't be wrong, don't, don't try and say you were right and have no, haven't done anything wrong. He's extolling God, which is good. Obviously, we should always extol God. But he's, he's not being the friend that God has called him to be. Listen, just listen to your friend, you know. Okay, so we're going to leave Job there. That's totally awesome, Jackie said. We're going to leave Job there, and we're going to go with Paul into 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 12, the light of the gospel. So therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. Okay, you might think, well, if they're perishing, why does God veil his gospel to them? If he unveiled it, maybe they wouldn't be perishing. 
No, that's not how that works. Once you know, now you know, now you're held accountable for it. Because they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, for them to know is just heaping condemnation on themselves. So it is veiled to those that are perishing because they're already perishing. They don't need to be held accountable for more of what they're not doing or not honoring God for. So that is why it is veiled to them. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So then you might say, well, if they're blinded, how can they be held accountable for not knowing who God is? It's not their fault they're blind. Actually, it is their fault that they're blind because unlike physical blindness, which we don't usually choose, spiritual blindness is something that can be overcome by seeking the reality and the truth of God. When we seek God, we will find him when we seek him with our whole heart. Well, because these people are not seeking God, they are not choosing to try to find out who the truth of God is. They remain blind by choice. It is their choice to be blind. They're choosing to turn that blind eye to the truth. And so because of that choice, they, they are, are blind by the God of this world. Yeah. So, mm, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let us let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So we also are called to be the light to shine out of the darkness. We are called to be that light that gives off the face of Jesus Christ. No pressure, right? Are you being the light of the face of Jesus Christ or are you being your own light? Just saying, because if you're trying to be your own light, it's not going to shine very well and people are not going to like it. So if you try to light up a dark world with Jesus, though, it might be enough light for someone that is blind in the world. Good morning, Sherry. Glad that you're watching. It might be enough light for someone that is blind in the world to choose to see God. Okay, treasures in jars of clay. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So the power that we have, the power in Jesus Christ to to share and to learn and to grow and to seek and to find and to to be who God's called you to be. That's not us. That's God. God gives you that power. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair. This is the same faith that Job has as well. Job did not have Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit at the time that he was alive, but he had a faith in God that caused him to not be crushed, that caused him to not despair, that caused him to know that God was God. And even though he was in his situation, he was not going to curse God and die, but he was going to be real and to call out to God in the reality of his state, right? Persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body of the always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. We carry the death of Jesus when we take up his cross and walk in him daily, right? When we um, are baptized into death, when we put away our old man and we are raised anew, when we put away the old things that we used to do, we die to our old self, right? The old things, the old way, the old life, and we come alive in Jesus Christ. We live for him. We live for his direction, for his call, for his purpose, right? And that is us being the life of Jesus, okay? For we who live are always being given over to the death for we who live are always been given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. So, and Paul again is speaking of himself and those that were with him. They were being persecuted. They were being um uh, put in chains and beaten and they were going through a lot right and they were willing to go through that for the cause of Christ now the ones that he is speaking to are not necessarily going through that persecution 
And because of that, because of the persecution that Paul and those with him were suffering, they were benefiting the life that they had and they were receiving from God through Jesus Christ because of his testimony, Paul and those with him. So that is God leading us through those hard times, right? Okay, so now it takes us to Psalms 44, 1 through 8. Come to our help. It's to the choir master, a, mas a maskel. Maskel is a... Oh, it should... It should go there. Let's see. I wonder why it won't go there. Oh, there it goes. Probably a musical or liturgical term. Well, I could have guessed that. So I guess that wasn't important to look up. So a maskel of the sons of Korah. The sons of Korah were um, those given to the songs that were sung in the temple. So chapter 44 of Psalms. Oh God, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us that de what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. With you with your own hand drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by your their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm save them, but your right hand and your arm and the light of your face, for you delighted in them. They are referencing um, the people of Israel who were saved from the, the land of Egypt and slavery there. And they did not conquer uh, the promised land. Good morning, baby girl. They didn't conquer the promised land on their own. They had to go through the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the one, God, God, obviously they didn't have Jesus at that time. God was the one that led them, that guided them, and that brought them to a place of freedom in the land, the promised land, right? So you are my king, O God, ordain salvation for Jacob. Through you, we push down our foes. Through your name, we tread down those who rise up against us. For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. And this is the same prayer and understanding we need to have today. For not in my strength or my health or my job or my wisdom do I trust, nor can my own abilities and my own power save me. That is what this equivalates to. This is, this is the same thing we should be saying of ourselves today. But you have saved us from our foes and have put to shame those who hate us. In God, we have boasted continually and we will give thanks to your name forever. Selah which means pause and to think about it and to allow it to become a new chapter in your life. When you boast continually, when you give thanks to God's name forever, it gives you a new song in your heart. It gives you a new ability to trust and to lean and to follow after God, right? Okay, so that gives us our last reading for today, Proverbs 22, 10 through 12. Drive out a scoffer and strife will go out and quarreling and abuse will cease. So all those are linked together. A scoffer, someone that says, Ugh, who does he think he is? How does he think that's going to work? That's, Ugh, that's not okay. Oh, you know, they always, well, whenever, I never, you know, the scoffer, the one that's always got something negative to say about everybody. If you drive that person away, strife, which is all arguing and quarreling and bickering between people, leaves also quarreling leaves abuse leaves so all those three things are tied up in the person that's always negative and always bringing the conversation and the group down so if we redirect that person you also redirect the quarreling the strife the abuse verse 11 he who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious will have the king as his friend. He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious will have the king as a friend. So what is your, where is your heart? Where is your words? Are they right with God or are they opposing to God? Because when they're right with God, the king is your friend, meaning you're blessed, you're honored, you're taken care of. But when your heart and your speech is wicked and evil and scoffing, 
then you have strife and quarreling and abuse. Do you see? So the last verse of the day, the eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he overthrows the words of a traitor. The Lord keeps watch over knowledge. All knowledge, all wisdom, all understanding are in the hands of God. And all we have to do is seek it. We, If we seek it, we will find it if we seek it with our whole heart. But he overthrows the words of a traitor. A traitor is someone who is against the king, against the authority, against the ruling power. And this authority and ruling power is God. So the traitor's words are going to be overthrown. Those that are against and opposing to God, their words will be overthrown. Will we see them being overthrown in our lifetime or in front of us? Sometimes. Sometimes we see those that are opposing and against God overthrown and we are so happy, right? Other times we're like, Lord, why are you letting this happen? Why are you letting them get away with this? And we wonder, where is God in this situation? Well, guess what? God's got this. And he doesn't always do things in our time frame, but in his own. And just because he doesn't overthrow it now, doesn't mean they're not going to be overthrown. Their words are against God. They will be overthrown. So we have to trust that God's got this because he is God and we are not. I know that's the hardest thing to, to focus on sometimes, right? Well, that's our ending of our readings for today. I hope that you have an excellent day. Um, if you can keep me in prayer and my family in prayer, we have lots of big changes going on. So I am in need of prayer for that. And if you have any other prayer requests or comments, please feel free to add them in. And I will go ahead and answer through them as I get them. Um, please like it. Please share it. And I thank you so much for your time. You guys, God bless. Bless you, Jackie. Thank you for coming in and we'll see you tomorrow.